Hi, welcome to the channel. It's been nearly a month now since we started our new ISA portfolio with Interactive Investor. How have we done and more importantly, how have we done in comparison with the rest of the market? Let's find out. I'm Anthony and as always, we're talking money. Okay, if you haven't already seen the video on how I choose the shares for this portfolio, I'll put in the link in the screen now so that you can check that one out first. But for a quick recap anyway, choosing shares for this portfolio was done by sifting the whole market, the, the UK market, by setting some key criteria. These criteria are really very simple. And namely, I wanted a meaningful valuation criteria and an efficiency criteria. So for the valuation measure, many people use something like the price earnings ratio or PE ratio. But personally, I find this one just a little bit too simplistic. And I've got another video on why I think this is so. Instead, I add on to this ratio an earnings growth factor and a volatility factor. And it's summed up as the PE GR ratio. Anything under one is considered good and relatively cheap and anything over say 1.2 is expensive. I go into a lot more detail on this particular ratio on my earlier video. So if none of this makes sense to you, then check out that video first. The next ratio I like is the return on capital employed. I think, I personally think it's a good efficiency ratio. How well is the company converting its capital into profit? I like a figure, personally again, of over 12, but the trend of whether this ratio is going up or down is also something to take into account. Armed with these two criteria, I use Stockopedia to sift the whole market, and then I also use Stockopedia's own stock ranks, they call them, that take into account things like cash flow, momentum, relative strength, etc, etc. When we ran these criteria at the beginning of April, in time for the new tax year, we reduced the whole market down from about 2,000 to 13 potential shares to buy. I decided to buy seven of these shares for the new portfolio. Some I rejected for no other reason that I already own some of these in other portfolios that I have. So with that in mind, we'll have a look at these shares now. Not just the ones that I chose for the portfolio, but also the ones that I didn't. So let's start with the shares that I did buy. These shares were Evraz, Rio Tinto, Sylvania Platinum, Record, Shoreserve, Central Asian Metals and Global Ports. The last share, Global Ports, I later found out was one particular share that I couldn't actually buy for my ISA portfolio. Interactive Investor informed me that I could buy it, but not in the ISA tax wrapper. I noticed that the shares were actually priced in dollars, so they may have something to do with it. Not to worry, I went back to my SIFT and I noticed that a new share had just popped into the SIFT list and it was a company called Forexpo, and I bought that instead. The total portfolio was started with the maximum allowed, which was £20,000, I kept 2,000 back just in case a new share piques my interest for later. And this is also because the portfolio has yet to generate any dividend income from which I can buy future shares. One of the other slight changes was I bought slightly more Rio Tinto shares for no other reason that I really like Rio Tinto's accounts and they operate in a market where I think future prices of their products will go up as the world economy recovers from COVID. So a month on, in fact, just three weeks later, What's the performance of our portfolio so far? The headline figure is that the portfolio is up by 6.5% or £1,250. Better than a poke in the eye with a dirty stick. But how does this compare with the rest of the market? After all, Warren Buffett says all ships rise in a rising tide. We wouldn't have done that well if the rest of the market has gone up, say, by 10%. Well, the FTSE 100 has risen by 1.6% and the FTSE All Share Index, which takes into account not just the top companies, but every single share in the index, has gone up by 3.4% in the same time period. So we can conclude that our 6.5% in this very short time, the portfolio has kicked off to a pretty good start. How have the individual shares done though? Here are the performance of all seven shares in the portfolio. One share that's done particularly well so far is Record. It's a finance company that specializes in currency exchange and has done remarkably well with a rise of 27%. I always like it when a share goes above 25% because it essentially means that I can never lose money on it with my stop loss limit set at around about 20%. By a quirk of maths incidentally, any rise of any fraction requires the next fraction fall to go to the same point. So for example, so a rise of a quarter means it needs a reduction of a fifth to get back to the starting point. A rise of a sixth requires a reduction of a seventh 
or a rise of an eighth needs a reduction of a ninth and so on and so forth. Anyway, I digress. We have some good solid rises with most of the shares and even the lower performers like Sylvania Platinum have done no worse than the indices. The only one that has shown a small fall is Shoreserve. This one has oscillated up and down throughout the month and I'll be keeping an eye on this one just to make sure it doesn't drop too much. But again, I won't hit the sell button on any of these shares unless they hit my stop loss limits. So how about the performance of the other shares that I didn't actually buy, which were on my initial SIFT list? I've excluded the ones like Global Ports that I couldn't buy and also Cas Minerals, which was subject to a takeover bid. And so I excluded that one because the share price had advanced strongly and the directors were indicating that they were going to accept that latest takeover bid price. Anyway, here is the list of the shares I could have bought but didn't. In my video, what shares to buy for 21 22. I go into some detail as to why I didn't buy some of these shares but as I said before one of the main reasons that I already have some of these in other portfolios and here's the performance over the same time period of the shares that I didn't buy. SES was up 13.5% over the three weeks. Character Group was up 27.1%. come back to that one in a second. Step Cement which was up another 21.6% and Morgan Sindel a really strong performer up 27.2%. ULS Technology was down nearly 12% and INS Group had no change at all over the, uh, over the month. So out of the ones that we did buy and the ones that we didn't, all but three have advanced nicely and quite a few have done very well indeed. This gives me more confidence that my initial sifting criteria are not too bad. But remember that one month does not give me the right to be cocky here. There will be a lot of noise over the coming months and may see some of these gains reverse quite quickly. But my hope is that over the longer term, good fundamentals of these shares will be reflected in the share price. And if they don't, and if something changes for the worse, then I know that my stop loss limits will kick me out and protect me from losing too much capital. Now, the nice thing at looking at shares that we didn't buy, as well as the ones that we did, is it is another learning opportunity. In this case, I can see whether the decision not to do something is better or worse than my decision to do something. In my previous video, I detailed the reasons why I chose the shares that I did. One case in point was Character Group. It met all my sifting criteria and was a definite potential, one of the 13 shares that met the sift at the time, but I chose not to buy it because I thought the accounts, I think in my words, looked a bit wacky. From memory, I didn't like the very high dividend in the latest year. The cash was trending down, the working capital and the net debt were also starting to go in the wrong direction. I was rational, but the share price has rocketed since my decision. So either my analysis was wrong or I was right at the time, but something has changed in the meantime. Without looking at this share, I will never know and therefore I can't evaluate what I'm doing. In the case of Character Group, incidentally, they reported better than expected results last week, beating even the upper expectations. Sales and profits have advanced very strongly in the last six months of their financial year. With hindsight, I would have profited handsomely, but I still think my rationale was right based on the fundamentals that I had at the time. But there was a material change to what was expected, something that only those very close to the company, like the directors or the staff, may have been privy to. One other example I wanted to share with you was Morgan Sindel. Again, one of my 13 shares to meet the sifting criteria. I hold this one in another portfolio, so I don't feel so bad not buying it for the Talking Money portfolio. But at the time I said I liked this share because everything was going in the right direction. Sales were trending up, so too were profits. Cash on the balance sheet was increasing, net debt was decreasing, working capital was trending up, basically everything I wanted to see. The only reason why I didn't buy that share was that the share price itself had advanced by 75% already. So I thought that the share might be due a plateau or a dip just to catch its breath. So I didn't buy it. Well, it's gone up by another 27%. <laughs> Man alive. Oh well, anyway, now what can I learn from here? My analysis was right. Again, my initial sift uncovered this share as a potential winner, but my decision was wrong and I was wrong because I thought that a strong rally in price excluded the possibility of that trend continuing. Well, that has cost me a lost opportunity. It's cost me 27% growth. However, a capital gain at the end of the month is still £1,250. And remember, no dividends have been paid so far. This is easily paid for my Stockopedia investment that made my initial sifting process possible. 
the annual fee that they charge is £245 for Stockopedia and it does put a lot of people off and I can understand that, I really can. I don't work for Stockopedia but I do use it frequently to find new potential investment ideas and if you want to try it for an extended period for free you get a two week free trial period I think and you also get a lifetime discount of 10% off their plans if you sign up using the link in the description below. You do me a small favour too as it helps support this channel too. Anyway, this is really just a quick update on how that portfolio has performed so far. I'm going to see if I can do a portfolio update every month so that we can see what we're doing essentially, how the, how the portfolio is performing. And at the same time, I'll tell you whether I've sold any of the shares and more importantly, which ones I've bought in. You don't have to follow any of my advice at all. In fact, I strongly urge anybody that's following but you know, this talking money portfolio to do your own research as well. I certainly don't get it right all the time. Um, I try and do my research and I try and buy and sell things on a rational basis. It doesn't always work out, but so far so good. Anyway, check out my other videos. I'll put some relevant ones on the screen now. I'll do portfolio updates every month, as I say, and I'll also post other finance related videos on investment, shares, things like that, and things, just things about economics in general. Hopefully we'll make some money this year and hopefully you will too. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, I'm Anthony and as always, we're talking money.